Have you ever thought about doing humanitarian work? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, I'm your host Leila. Today we bring you Marie-France Bourgeois who tells us about her own humanitarian aid involvements. What were your early interests and involvements that led you to do humanitarian work? Well, I think I was born with it. Some people are born to their, they want to be dancers or singers. I just wanted to do humanitarian work. So I started a long time ago with my master's in New York, also an internship at the United Nations. And you know, doing an internship is always a good way to get to know an organization and to get to know the people. And after that, I was able to land a job with the United Nations in the field. What were your positions in the UN and the Democratic Republic of Congo and Italy? While I was in Rome, I was working for the World Food Program and there I was in charge of needs assessment. So basically when a new catastrophe would hit, I would be sent out there to evaluate how much food aid was needed and to whom we should send it and which type of food aid. So this is how I traveled the whole world. And then I went to the Congo for two years and there I was in charge of coordinating the humanitarian aid for the entire Congo. So imagine that we had a budget of about $400 million. We had donors from all over the world, Canada, Japan, USA, and so on and so forth. We had an envelope that I would have to redistribute with a team of people also to monitor to ensure that the money that we were giving to those projects were well spent. How did you work together with peacekeepers there? In the Congo, this is the biggest peacekeeping force in the world called MONUC. I worked with a lot of them in the field because they deployed all over the country because often I could not travel by myself. There are more than 100,000 US and peacekeepers deployed worldwide. We hear of misconducts by them in Democratic Republic of Congo. What were your own observations? Think about it. You send people away from their families for over a year to 18 months, and I met those men in places are extremely harsh. No running water, the sun is extremely hot, you don't have really the food that you usually eat. This is not to excuse what those gentlemen have done, okay? By any means. But you have to think that those people are put in very harsh conditions, and sometimes their behaviors are not up to the standards it should be. How relevant is violence and conflicts to areas that need humanitarian aid? Usually when you have conflict, that means you have displacement, usually. So that means that you do need humanitarian aid, unless the people are capable to cope. So this is why they send teams like I used to go to assess what are the coping mechanisms that people have. Because if you have an earthquake, will you give food and shelter to people who have a lot of money in the bank? But if you have, you know, the same kind of earthquake somewhere else in uh, China, in the backyards, then, you know, those people don't have a big bank account and they can rely upon. So you always have to see, you know, who needs it and who doesn't. So conflict does bring a lot of suffering, especially for women and children. Based on your experience, what makes humanitarian issues political issues? Because they're intertwined. You see people dying and you have to have governments responding. But the whole problem for the United Nations is how to be able to intervene. I think we sit right now with Zimbabwe, with Mugabe. I think Ban Ki-moon has been very clear, you know, to not recognize the elections. We want countries to be wholesome and yet we want countries to be doing well. And sometimes it poses a problem and I think the United Nations needs to address this issue in the near future because it's been happening a lot in the past few years as you've seen. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you.